Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be giving you some tips on atmospheric lighting and scene composition with EV in Blender 2.8. We're going to be talking about the purposeful use of light sources to complement a scene as well as ways to describe scale and distance to the viewer. What I've done in preparation for this is set up a few minimalist scenes to demonstrate some of what we're going to be talking about. If you want to play around with these scenes for yourself then you can download the resources from this video for free from the link in the description. Before we start, we should make a quick note about realism versus the cool factor. With artwork, composition and lighting is arguably one of the most important elements, because without lighting you wouldn't see anything. Oftentimes with artwork that has a single point of focus, such as a character in a pose, it's desirable to disregard realism and just start flooding the scene with all kinds of lights for the sole purpose of making the character look cool. Now that's all well and good for that purpose, but in this video we're going to be taking a look at atmospheric lighting which is more suitable for describing environmental compositions. Always keep in mind though, the rules are meant to be broken and you could just as well hybridize your lighting style by having unrealistic cool looking lighting in the foreground and more realistic environmental lighting in the background. So what we're going to do is start off talking about light sources. One thing you should always think about when setting up your environment is the flow of energy and ways to describe it visually, meaning where the light should be coming from. Making use of light sources that are placed realistically can help to sell the believability. For this example scene, I've created a cityscape of silhouette shapes. Now of course you don't have to copy reality if you don't want to, but when it comes to lighting cities, the majority of light usually comes from the ground level, often following roads and highways where the street lights, advertisements and all kinds of decorations are located. All of this energy creates a very recognizable light pollution that bleeds into the sky. We can simulate this with volumetric lighting in Eevee. If you live in or around a major city, you'll likely be familiar with the subtle artificial orange glow after the sun's gone down. Of course it doesn't have to be orange, the only reason I've used it here is for familiarity with the real world. The general aim should be for the viewer to be able to tell where the sources of energy are in the scene, whether or not they're in frame. In this case you can see that pretty much all of the light is coming from below and bleeding up into the sky. Noise in the volume helps to sell the sense of atmosphere. To get this effect you can simply plug the principled volume node into the volume input of the world output node. By adding a noise texture with a low scale value and plugging in a color ramp, you can play around with this until you see the desired effect. This volume noise effect is great for creating an inconsistent atmosphere. With some adjustments you can quite easily get it looking like low-lying fog or distant rain. It produces quite a satisfying visual effect when moving the camera that really helps to sell the sense of depth. Another thing that's useful about using a volume to bleed light through the scene is that it will help inform the distance between objects. As well as this, it will help to pronounce the outlines of silhouettes for better clarity. For example, here we have basic geometric structures representing buildings. Without volumetric lighting enabled, it's hard to tell where the buildings end and how close they are to each other in poorly lit areas. But when enabled, the light in between suddenly gives us a lot more clarity in defining the structures. There is an obvious change in shade between overlapping silhouettes. Combining this with camera movement it clearly demonstrates the distances between objects. Now we're going to talk about distance lighting. Brighter areas of lights are often used to draw the attention of the eye to points of focus. A good way to indicate scale at distance is to compress the size of details down towards the focus point. That means having larger sweeping shapes in the foreground and smaller clusters of shapes in the background. Composition is also important here to guide the flow. Notice how the platform our character is standing on is pointing in the general direction of our distant focus point. Feel free to download the file and experiment with the perspective. Now we're going to move on to out of frame light sources. Representing a light source that is coming from outside of the visible scene can help give more character to the composition. It raises the question of where this light source is coming from and implies that there is more to the world than meets the eye. You can make creative use of this by using the light rays to illuminate points of focus in the scene. Again, getting these atmospheric streaks of light requires volumetrics to be enabled. On the left you can see that I've also created a gap between the structures where I've placed a collection of area lights that are giving us this extra illumination from below the surface. One thing that might slip people's minds is that the absence of light is equally as important as the presence of light. Layering dark on light areas is just as powerful as doing it the other way around and can be used to tell a different visual story. It doesn't necessarily have to be a case of foreground versus background either. Here I have two examples of the same scene where the character is positioned in darkness. The rays of light are creating this alternating effect of light and darkness throughout the scene. In the first image, a layer of darkness acts as our foreground, whereas in the second image, this is not the case. 
they both look nice, but number two is composed in a way which includes more layers of light. So just to wrap up what we've talked about, I've condensed this into four ideas. Number one, describe the sources of energy. Number two, condense details at distance. Number three, make use of lighting out of frame. And number four, subtract darkness from the light. This is certainly not a comprehensive breakdown of how to get the best looking lighting, but if you've ever had trouble with lighting and composition, then hopefully these simplified points might help you in composing your scenes. Remember, you can download all of the blend files shown in this video for free from the link in the description so you can play around with everything for yourself. I want to say an extra thank you for everyone who has given me donations for my free resources. It's very much appreciated and there will definitely be more for you to get your hands on in the future. So that will do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring that bell. You can follow me on social media to stay up to date on videos. If you're interested, you can also join our community Discord server where you can take part in discussions and share your work. Links for everything can be found in the description. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.